Today you're going to see four different demonstrations. The first two of them are going to be in chauffeur mode. What chauffeur means is that the car drives for you. You would use a chauffeur car if you can't drive, for instance, if you're disabled, if you don't want to drive, if the traffic is very bad, or if you're taking a taxi cab ride, like mobility as a service. The other two demonstrations are going to be in guardian mode. This is for people who want to drive. It's a safety net against having a crash. We have designed a special test car, which has dual steering wheels, dual brakes, and dual accelerators. The reason for this is that we need two different personnel in the front of the car. One is a safety driver. The other driver is a test driver. They are there to interact with the car as if they're the actual driver in a production car. But for our development, this is a tremendous advance because it lets us test the Guardian system with a actual test driver while still having a safety driver there just in case. We're going to start off with the chauffeur mode of the car, uh, where the car is going to be doing all the driving for us. So you can basically sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. All right, you ready, Sharon? Yes, I'm ready. Are you ready, Aaron? I'm ready. OK, here we go. And one of the real world things that we have to handle in self-driving mode are all the randomness that occurs every day. Actually, in this lap, uh, we're recreating a scenario where we've had a pickup truck drive along the track and actually dump some hay bales out of the back randomly. So what you're going to see is our car senses, does a safe lane change, senses the next one, and also then changes back. Very simple. So what we're going to show you in this slide now is how this car is able to interact with the traffic uh, on the roadway. So as we're coming around the bend here, you'll see that there's a, another car on the track with us. The car senses it. <laughs> oh, uh, it's right there. See, we got actually our pickup truck parked in our lane, blocking us. So you see our vehicle slow down, nice. tuck in behind that vehicle that was in our blind spot, and then do smooth lane change back. That was really smooth. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, very cool. Now we're going to demonstrate our Guardian system. We're going to emulate what happens when a driver falls asleep. Guardian can tell by using a camera that's part of the dashboard. The camera can even see through sunglasses in order to see what the driver's eyes are doing or if their head is moving into a position that indicates they're not paying attention. So Ryan, whenever you're ready, why don't you go ahead and pretend to fall asleep? And now Guardian has stepped in. It's driving the car for you. And now it will offer at some point to give it back to you. Why don't you go ahead and take it now? One of the most frightening things that can happen on the highway is when a car in front of you switches lanes to avoid debris. You have very little time to react because your view is blocked by the car in front of you. We have sensors that can see significantly better than a human driver can see. The Guardian is going to take over where a car switches lanes in front of us in order to avoid debris. Here, that car switches lanes. Guardian decides we have to switch lanes also, and we avoid having a crash. Now Guardian has offered to hand back control, and Ryan has taken control back of the car. So today you've seen demonstrations of two basic technologies that the Toyota Research Institute is doing research on. This is all part of PRI's work to eventually build a car that can never be responsible for a crash, regardless of what the driver does. Hello, I'm Kiyotaka Ise, Chief Safety Technology Officer of Toyota. Today, we are excited to share the latest progress our teams at the Toyota Research Institute and Toyota Motor Corporation have made in automated driving research. Our work is progressing quickly and has accelerated much faster than before. At the same time, we are releasing a white paper which summarizes our overall approach to automated driving and helps explain our way of thinking. Automated cars can bring many benefits to society, but one of the top priorities at Toyota is to make our roads safer. While it's a given that one day cars will be smart enough to drive people, we think that building a technology partnership between drivers and the car will bring the greatest safety advantage. In the near term, we continue to bring advanced safety technologies to the mass market. And now, it is my pleasure to introduce Dr. Gil Platt. 
TRI has a, I think, very unique view on autonomy, and I think it comes from our parent Toyota and its view of the relationship between the driver and the car. We think that the driver and the car work together and that we're actually most excited about them working together as teammates. In fact, the first product that Toyota is putting out in this kind of technology is called the Highway Teammate. Level two autonomy is a system where the driver is expected to always be ready to, at a moment's notice, take control of the car if the autonomy says, I can't do this anymore for whatever reason. So the challenge with level two is that you have to be vigilant, you have to monitor at all times and be ready to take over, even if the system doesn't tell you that it needs takeover. And the big challenge for level two systems is making it such that it's worth doing that. Is it going to be more of a burden to supervise the car and to be ready to accept control back from the car than to actually just manually drive the car? What we're working on at TRI right now is how do we improve that? How do we improve the quality of the drive so that you can have a level two system and it's actually worth engaging? Even though much of the self-driving industry that's emerging has sort of latched onto these two paths of either removing the driver or having the driver be monitoring the autonomy system, we think there's a third path which is more of this sort of this blend of the human and the machine. Who should guard whom? Should a human being guard the artificial intelligence system, or should the AI guard the human? What does it mean for a driver and a car to work synergistically with each other as teammates? That's the guardian function that we're working on. Guardian autonomy is one where the driver is actually manually driving the car, just as we do now. But there's a backseat driver, as it were, that's watching what you're doing all of the time and making its own plans of how it would drive the car if it were in charge. The idea of Guardian is to be as capable as a human driver, but only intervene when it's necessary. We think we're using AI to guard the human, and I think it's gonna lead us to delivering a, uh, a new technology that um, the rest of the world hasn't seen. We plan to demonstrate Guardian technology uh, at the 2020 Olympics. Uh, we're very excited about doing that, and we expect that a car will be put on sale with that technology shortly thereafter. We're also working on level four systems, what we call the chauffeur mode of autonomy, where the car truly can be given all the responsibility for driving on its own. We're trying to define the artificial intelligence DNA for Toyota vehicles, that there are these algorithms that are based on data and machine learning and advanced robotic capabilities, and they can be applied both towards the chauffeur mode where the car is doing the primary driving task and the guardian mode where it's the human driver that we're augmenting and making safer. Level five is really exciting. That is where the car can essentially drive itself during um, any kind of weather, during any kind of traffic, the same kind of environment that we can drive in. That is many years off. One of the big questions that we've been asking is how safe is safe enough? When is this technology ready to be deployed at large scale? It's one thing to make a five minute YouTube video. It's another thing to think about deploying this technology at the scale of 10 million cars per year uh, and into the hands of just everyday people. And that is a huge challenge, I think. In order to do enough testing, we need billions of miles of testing. And that's more than you can practically do physically with cars. So when we hear about one manufacturer or the other testing millions of miles, uh, we think that's nice, but it's only a fraction of what needs to be done. We're using simulation in order to greatly expand the actual number of miles that are tested. And it's not simple simulation. It's simulation that takes the physical testing that we do and amplifies it to many more miles. Reliable, robust perception means that the car has a good understanding of the motion of vehicles, pedestrians, bicycles around it. Perception and prediction are some of the really core AI challenges. We've had some breakthroughs. Uh, one of the areas that we're working on is uh, cars that can see much further into the distance and have uh, a greater understanding of the situation that is ahead and around them uh, than current autonomous cars. We are very excited about building this sensor-rich new platform that will give us a huge leap in terms of capability to perceive objects in the environment reliably. TRI thinks that Toyota has a great opportunity to become number one in autonomous vehicles. And the reason for that is that autonomous driving in the future is not primarily gonna be about human-written software. It's gonna be about data. 
It's been said that uh, data is the new oil or data is the new gold. We think Toyota has the potential to leverage its strengths in terms of its volume. Toyota can translate that volume of production advantage into a volume of data advantage through Toyota Connected to make our cars perform better in their AI than anybody else's. A robot is a much simpler version of a car. Toyota's expertise in managing that kind of a supply chain is going to be directly applicable to designing, manufacturing, deploying, servicing robots. We have organized our robotics research into three primary topics. The home, the factory, and enabling technologies. TRI's research is poised to make breakthroughs in manipulation. So you will see our robots picking things up and using tools, helping a person put heavy things away, taking things out of a grocery bag and putting them in the refrigerator. One of our best ideas for using robots around the home is telepresence, allowing the older adult to be in an environment that their body is not able to go to. Using the TRI robots, you'll be able to log in to the robot, see through the robot eyes, listen through the robot ears, and feel like you are there. I've seen many studies of the market opportunities in robotics, and they're all shaped like this. The user experience is one of the most important parts of this work. Artificially intelligent systems could be scary, could be threatening. Designing for emotional attachment cuts across all of our efforts. User experience is all about creating a delightful and safe user experience around a product, melding the technology and the human, creating that perfect interaction between the two. In 2020, when we show the vehicles at the Olympics, we'll be showcasing how the car is taking in things like emotion data, or body posture, or eye gaze. All of these things working together to generate better user experience. We're making sure that we have a unified design language that extends all across the different screens within a vehicle. I want my grandma to be able to get in the car and immediately understand and this, of course, builds trust with the interface. Akio has been the most important person in the creation of TRI. It's incredible that a car company that has been as successful and as established as Toyota is willing to actually do this remarkably revolutionary thing of starting a new lab with a significant budget to look into the future. To me, it's a privilege to be helping to realize Akio Toyota's vision, how Toyota can transform itself and to be part of this kind of very revolutionary transformative change in how we think about mobility. And I think there's an urgency to do this as quickly as we can. And I think we're on a strategy to get that technology into the market uh, as quickly as possible. The mission of the Toyota Research Institute is to use artificial intelligence to improve Toyota's ability to make ever better cars. AI is expanding and ever improving and there will be more and more applications that will be directly relevant to Toyota. TRI's job is to find them and show they're possible.